Welcome to Polly Stitch channel. I have been sewing for quite a few years and in those years I've collected a lot of pieces of drape. These are cuttings and remnants of fabric. As you know, I can't just throw them away. I have to sew something off them. But what? I couldn't come with anything at first. But for a start, I began to cut out strips 6 cm wide, which was the widest I could get, and if there was an opportunity, I cut squares of 12 by 12 cm or 6 by 6 cm. Also, I prepared strips of trim from a thin fabric. I got some strips 5 cm wide and some 3 cm wide. So, that thin lining fabric, which is very difficult to use anywhere else, will be our trim. Let's begin our work step by step. Step 1. Sew these 5 cm trim strips to the front side of the drape strips or squares and back tack. Fold the piece in half lengthwise. Sew the 3 cm wide strips to the seamy side and back tack. Do not break the threads between the pieces, but sew everything together as a single long piece. Step 2. Sew the pieces of drape to the narrow trim. Step 3. Fold the wide trim from the front side to the side of the second piece of drape and sew them together. This way we sew all the pieces of the drape together. Then cut the piece so that you have pieces 6 by 12 centimeters, connect and we should get squares measuring 12 by 12 centimeters. We get different types of patches. I laid them evenly in piles. Step 4. Now we begin to sew them together using the same method of double trims. We stitch our patches in random order to the bottom trim. The main thing is to make sure that the colors of the fabrics that lie next to them do not repeat themselves.
Step 6. We turn the canvas around and sew the double trim from the front side like we did before. You get a very interesting double-sided canvas. Step 7. Now let's move on to stitching the strips horizontally. Cutting along the edge, we also sew the trims on both sides. And with further connection, the next fragment must be sewn to the lower trim. But you see that this connection is interfering, so we should cut it. Then the fabric needs to be straightened and we sew it together. With this method, we do not have to worry about joining the seams. They are all in place. Step 8. Now we are already making the last stitch and finally connecting all the details. We just have to make the edging or a frame using bias binding or a trim. Well, girls, you see, I have such a wonderful double-sided blanket. I'm very pleased. I don't even know how to tell you. Let me show it from both sides. So, what is the beauty of this blanket? First of all, I just got rid of a huge number of scraps. I just didn't know where to use them, but now they're all in place. Secondly, the leftovers of thin fabric are gone, which I also did not know where to apply. Because in traditional patchwork, such fabrics simply cannot be used anywhere. So, there is still life in the old dog yet. <laughs> Alright, my dear girls and boys, write comments, like this video, and click on the bell icon so you won't miss my new videos. Thank you for watching and see you soon.